was there ever an issue with excess? Um, I'm assuming no, because we use Hakala labs now and, you know, their testing is 50 milligrams and I, we have not had a single client that had issues taking that much and just. Well, if you have normal issues. kidney function, there should be no issues. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't have normal kidney function, we don't really know because the studies okay. haven't been done, mm -hmm. but you know, with mild to moderate renal failure, I've not had a problem using the same doses of iodine. If it's severe kidney failure, I dose the iodine lower just as I would anything that's cleared through the kidneys. But about 98% of orally taking iodine is cleared through the kidneys. And therefore, these doses that we're talking about, 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, should not really cause toxicity problems. Now, you can have bromide problems, or you can have Herxheimer reaction problems from it, or maybe allergic reactions to it if you're allergic to something in it. But as far as toxicity problems go, that shouldn't really be the case for the vast majority of people. Yeah. And we've seen the same thing. So I don't know if it was through your interview, but I ended up um, starting to work with Hakala Labs to do testing. And so everyone obviously doing that test has taken some level of iodine because they're wanting to see if they're sufficient. And we have maybe one test of like the many that we've done that was sufficient in iodine. Everyone else has been deficient. And, and then when they choose to do the bromide test and the uh, fluoride or chloride, the bromide is often fluoride is also a little elevated, but bromide is almost always elevated. So then they even need to take more um, iodine even from that. But it's just interesting that these people are like, oh, I'm probably sufficient. I'm just going to test. And then almost everyone is deficient, even though they're testing. So I would I would say to your listeners, if a woman has fibrocystic breast disease, which over the there was an autopsy study, which showed 88 percent of U.S. women have fibrocystic breast disease, whether they know it or not. Okay. But if, if a woman has fibrocystic breast disease, she's iodine deficient, period. And that's wow. the cause of it, and that's the treatment for it. If she has ovarian cyst disease, she's got iodine deficiency. If a person, you know, male or female, has autoimmune thyroid disease, they're iodine deficient. If they're pancreatic cysts, ovarian, uterine, breast, breast, prostate cysts, or prostate growth, they're generally iodine deficient. You know, so it's the glandular tissue. Remember, it's, it's maintaining the normal architecture, and then cysts, nodules, hyperplasia, cancers, that continuum that iodine deficiency will cause. Does the iodine deficiency affect a certain glandular gland first? Like, would it be that, or does it vary per individual? Well, you know, I think that there's got to be competition in the glands for iodine, especially when things right. are scarce. And the same mechanism, the sodium iodine symporter, which is a little taxi cab that moves iodine from the bloodstream into the into the gland, which has been shown in the thyroid and the breast tissue and the ovarian tissue. It's probably in the rest of the tissues, although I don't think there are studies saying that, but I'm sure it's the same mechanism. And Perfect. I think the glands, I think the glands will compete for iodine, especially when, when resources are scarce. And I can't tell you why uh, this woman's going to have cystic breast disease and not cystic ovary disease. And yeah. maybe, maybe she'll have a goiter. Maybe the goiter will be the problem. And maybe the breast will, won't be the problem. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have enough wisdom for that one. Um, but I, I think it's the same mechanism that's causing, you know, these problems, but what's really common is they'll have fibrocystic breast disease. They'll have thyroid disease and they'll have ovarian disease altogether. And if it goes on longer, they'll start to get pancreatic disease and, you know, and men will get prostate disease. So, you know, having multiple glandular diseases is unfortunately the common thing right now in our toxic world we live in depleted toxic world we live in.